We need someone who's willing to go out on these big issues of the day and draw contrasts. We're not going to win this election, ladies and gentlemen, because the Republican candidate has the most money to beat up their opponent and win the election. We're not going to win this election with over a lopsided money advantages. We won't have one in the fall. President Obama will have more money, whoever our nominee is. So just think about what it's going to take. It's going to take ideas, vision, contrast, a record of accomplishment that can go up against the failed policies of Barack Obama. That's the winner. Well, let's just take a look at that in the Republican field. Who has the boldest contrast? Who has the record that they can run on? Who has the bold plans to turn this economy around and to support the, the very institutions of our country that provide the foundation of our country, faith and family? Who has that strong track record and that contrast? Okay. I guess I can quit now since you're all convinced of that, but, <laughs> but let's look at it. On the issue of Obamacare, who has a record of supporting health savings accounts and tort reform and bottom-up consumer-driven health care for 20 years? And who, has, and who has supported, in fact, the stepchild of Obamacare, the person in Massachusetts who built the largest government-run health care system in the, in the United States. Someone who would simply give that issue away in the fall. Give the issue away of government control of your health. Who would be the better person to go at the Obama administration on trying to control the energy and the manufacturing sector of our economy and trying to dictate to you what lights to turn on and what cars to drive? Would it be someone that bought into man-made global warming and imposed the first carbon cap in a state of Massachusetts, the first state to do so in the country? Would it be someone who would take on the other big issue of government control of our economy, which is the government control of the financial services sector? We see, a lot of, we see all, everybody up on stage at the debates complaining about Dodd-Frank. But two of the three candidates supported the Wall Street bailout, which was the predecessor of which Dodd-Frank was based upon. So who would provide the clear contrast of believing in the conservative vision of bottom-up, free people, free markets, not government dependency, government control? Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to win with money. We're going to win with contrasts. We're going to win with ideas. We're going to win by making Barack Obama and his failed policies the issue in this race. We won in 2010 because conservatives rallied. They were excited about the contrasts. They were excited about the candidates who were put forth in that election. And that's why we won. We always talk about, oh, how are we going to get the moderates? Why would an undecided voter vote for a candidate of a party who the party's not excited about? <laughs> we need conservatives now to rally for a conservative, to go into November, to excite the conservative base, to pull with that excitement moderate voters, and to defeat Barack Obama in the fall. When I close, I'll just say this. When I started our, our speech, I referred to where our rights came from. 
And of course, that's in our Declaration of Independence. I know a lot of folks like to focus on the Constitution. The Constitution is obviously the operator's manual for America. It is the how of America. And it's essential that we return our government to the constraints of that Constitution. But the why of America, who we are, is in the Declaration. In these words, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. That's who we are, a country that was built on the idea that rights come to us from God and that the government's job, the one thing the government's job is to do, is to protect those rights so you can form families and churches and community organizations, civic groups, hospitals, schools, and build a great and just society from the bottom up. That's the conservative vision for America. That's who we are. At the end of that declaration, there was a phrase. And these signers signed, if, signed this declaration with this pledge. They pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. No one is asking you today to go out and pledge your life. Although, thank God, men and women step forward every single day and put the uniform on of the military and do so. And I, and I am not asking for your fortune, although if you go to ricksantorum.com, a piece of that fortune would be very helpful. But I am asking for your honor, to put your honor on the line. Honor is a term that's not used very often in America anymore, but is exactly what's at stake, because this is our watch. We are stewards of a great inheritance. And it is our responsibility to shepherd that inheritance and to make it a greater and richer one for the next generation. And if we fail to do that, then we have failed our duty and our honor as Americans. This is your opportunity. Many generations come and go in America and live in many respects inconsequential, inconsequential times. You are blessed to live in a time when America needs you. You are Please walk out of this gathering. Choose the candidate that you believe is the right person to lead this country, not just to victory, but to the changes that are necessary for that victory to be won that you can say, I have done my duty, I have kept my honor. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>